Oh boy, oh boy, this is exciting. Hello my friends, I'm Spell and welcome back to the channel. So yesterday I had to rush and publish the video about the Sport Glide not being dead yet. You can watch it here. It was scheduled to be released this coming Sunday, but Harley Davidson just released some information about the new 2022 models. So it didn't make any sense waiting till Sunday for the video to be released. Anyway, I just spent a few hours last night writing the script for this video. I absolutely suck at putting my thoughts together on the go in a way that would make sense to you guys without uh, getting lost in my own thoughts. So uh, anyway, let's start. First things first. Hell yeah, I was correct. The Sport Glide will be available on the European market and it does cost 5% more than the 2021 model. So here in the UK it means it starts at £16,795, that's £800 more. Pricey, yeah. Other than the price, everything seems just about the same. You still have your 107 engine there inverted front forks, single disc brake, bags, etc. If you want colored matched bags, you need to pay an extra £375 and the colors available for the bike are the Vivid Black, the Gauntlet Grey Metallic and the new White Sand Pearl. There is no Snake Venom color option anymore. Although I personally don't think I would buy a bike that isn't black, I actually miss seeing some color options available for the Sport Glide like uh, some orange, red or blue. So yeah, that's the 2022 Sport Glide, basically the same as the 2021 model, but more expensive. Uh, so I guess it makes it better, right? Right? Okay, now let's move on to the second part of the video. Oh my God, is the Lowrider that's dead and the Heritage too? What the hell? I right, guess I'm just joking. First of all, Harley Davidson didn't list all the models for us to see yet. They are keeping some models for the big reveal on the 26th. It is normal they do it this way. I believe they are keeping the new models, whatever those may be, and models with the most significant changes away from public view. On the Harley Davidson UK website, the Sport Glide is there, but it isn't on the US website. As this model didn't suffer significant changes and has been unveiled here in the UK, I guess we can assume it is the end of the line for the Sport Glide in the US market. What a sad day. But now, maybe the biggest surprise of them all, at least for me. There is no heritage listed on the UK website, but there is on the US one. Again, no significant changes, just like the Sport Glide. Some heritage models now come with cast wheels, but that's it. So based on the Sport Glide case, can we assume the heritage will not be available in Europe anymore? Hmm, that's very interesting. I'm trying to think why that is. Per sales? Price? I don't really know and I don't have access to sales figures to try and comprehend this a bit better. I think this ties up a bit with what I said yesterday. The Sport Glide offers pretty much the same but on a more modern look and is 4K cheaper. So it is difficult to justify buying the Heritage instead of the Sport Glide. Unless you are that set on getting a retro looking type of bike. In that case, money and reason plays very little part in it. But make no mistake, I'm not shitting on the Heritage. I love its looks, it is just iconic and at some point I was even considering buying one instead of the Sport Glide. But as I said before, I could never justify the difference in price. Anyway, I guess it's fair to say the Sport Glide killed the Heritage. Oh, maybe not. But at the same time, the pricing was a bit strange too. Much more expensive than the Sport Glide, but very similar, or at least very close in price to the touring models such as the Road King. A question for us all. There are some possibilities here as why it seems to have been dropped from the UK market, 
but not from the US. Do you think the heritage is or was robbing sales from the Turing models? Or are the Turing models robbing sales from the heritage? Let me know in the comments what you think. To be honest, the more I think about it, the more interesting it gets and more differences um, or preferences seem to exist between markets. Okay, but moving on to the next surprise. Where the hell is the low right at S? My wild guess is that the low right at S is suffering some substantial changes. So we will have to wait till the 26th to see it. Are we getting that rumored tooling version? If we do, will it be available on both the US and the UK market? Personally, I think it will. It makes sense. But for the good or for the worse, will it not have the same fate as the Sport Glide? Let's start with the US. So this new model will kind of be taking the place once owned by the Sport Glide. Sport Glide that despite its awesome value was never that popular. That's why it was removed from the 2022 lineup. Maybe over in the US people prefer the more classic look of the heritage, but then my question would be, will that Turing Low Ride at S not suffer the same fate of the Sport Glide? It will still be a modern looking machine, but it will not have the price advantage the Sport Glide had. Especially if it comes with that bigger fatting and speakers and so on. I'm predicting the price will be very close to the heritage. So I don't know man, this can go either way to be fair. What do you guys over there in the US think? If the rumors end up being true and uh, the price tag just about the same, what bike would you guys choose? The Turing Lowrider S or the heritage? Let me know in the comments. Now over here in Europe and the UK, the Sport Glide is still a thing, but there's no heritage here. So the first thing that comes to my mind is, will the new Turing Lowrider S take the place of the heritage? Price wise, it will be very close to what the heritage used to cost. I will say about 20K. I don't know, maybe here people don't dig the retro look of the heritage anymore. If that's the case, if people don't want retro looking bikes, it kind of starts to make some sense to me. There would be some kind of progression of bikes there that you could choose from if you like to do a bit of touring. Let me try to explain this the best way possible. So you want uh, to be able to go touring, right? But you don't fancy anything too big and heavy and you value the options to run the bike naked whenever you want or simply when you are not doing big rides. For that, you would have the Sport Glide at let's just say 17k, right? But then if you are someone that wants a bigger fairing, maybe you want speakers too, a bigger engine and so on, but you still want a bike that is, we hope, nimble and light, then the Turing Lowrider S would be the bike for you at around 20k. And finally, you would have the big and heavy Turing machines starting at uh, around 21k with the Road King and then the Street and the Road Glide at around 26. For me, that starts to make some sense, but the looks and general features will play a huge part in the success of this new model. Will it be worth the price difference? Who knows man, it is very hard to have uh, a better opinion without actually knowing what Harley Davidson will be releasing. At this point I think it's anyone's guess. But hey, do you know what? Have you considered that we got it all wrong? I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe there is no turning model of the Lowrider S whatsoever. Maybe the Lowrider S will suffer some changes, yes, but nothing as drastic as we are predicting. Maybe a 117 engine perhaps to go against Indian's 116. Some different bars, maybe optional saddlebags, a slightly different fanning. Maybe Harley just wants to transform the Lowrider S into a kind of a new and slightly improved sport glide, keeping the Lowrider S platform in a way that will allow people to customize it and transform it to what they want. What do you guys think of it? 
regardless of all that, it's game on. The expectation and hype is huge, so we are all hoping not to be disappointed. I am indeed very excited by it, but regardless of what is to come, I will not get rid of my Sport Glide. I just got it and for the price I paid for it, it would make no sense at all to sell it now. I'm saying that, but the reality is, you know, it might blow me away and I'll not rest until I get one. Would you trade your bike for it? Let me know in the comments. Alright, my friends. Whew. This was officially the fastest video I ever made. From doing the research to writing the script, recorded, edited, everything in less than 24 hours. Well, my friends, I hope this video was useful to you. If you liked it, please give me the thumbs up. If you didn't, well, the thumbs down is there for a reason, okay? And if you like my content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. Ride safe, stay safe, and I'll see you soon, my friends. Kadosh!